Hi folks, this is Kurt from Whitetails Deer Hunting and today we're going to talk about how I use Onyx to plot waypoints in the field. Today we're going to start the second video in this series about how I use Onyx to scout. Uh, the first series was me in the winter time finding some public land that I was interested in hunting and setting up some general hikes and some basic waypoints. Uh, today we're going to get out in the field on some public land only about 25 minutes from my house and I'm going to go through exactly with you guys how I work through these maps, uh, how I collect waypoints and how I put all the information and data down on that map that I'm gonna use when I get home to be able to interpret and figure out what places are gonna be solid places to hunt this fall. Here's the map that I set up this winter when I was at home using Onyx. You can see there's a blue dot there representing me standing beside my truck. And then there's a series of dashed yellow lines, which is the proposed hike that I set up that I'm going to do today. You'll also see that I put some waypoints on there to make it a little bit easier uh, to find some important points when I'm out in the field. So I no further got more than about 20 yards from the truck and I find this nice deer trail uh, that's parallel on the road right here. I'm uh, really not going to start to plot anything right away on this property. I want to get a little bit further back away from the road, um, but it gives me an indication that there are some deer in this area. This is a pretty heavily beaten down path. Still following this trail across, really only about 50 yards away from the road still here, but I found this apple tree, wild apple tree growing out here in the woods. So this is something that I'll go ahead and uh, I'll mark on Onyx. I've already hit the tools button in the Onyx app, so now I'm gonna click on add waypoints. Uh, scroll up to hit the plus button to find all of the possible waypoint symbols. And I'm gonna go down until I found one that's a picture of an apple and it says food source. And I'm gonna click on that one. And you'll see that the apple pops up and then I have to specifically move that apple to the position that I'm standing with this blue dot right here on the Onyx map. Here's one that I haven't found so far in my travels. Uh, New York State law, you cannot discharge a firearm uh, within 500 feet of a structure, even though I'm still on public land. Uh, looks like DEC along with the landowners uh, made sure that they put some of these signs up so people are observing the fact that there is a structure within 500 feet and they cannot discharge a firearm within that area. So I'm going to go ahead and plot this on Onyx. As I'm walking away from the road towards the back of this property, I find this old logging road here. It's definitely been quite a few years since this has been used, I'd say at least eight or ten. But sometimes these old logging roads, when you find some places to hunt, and then you backtrack back to your vehicle are places that you can use to quietly get into the areas that you're going to hunt. So I'll go ahead and mark this on my map right here as a logging road. So if you take a look at the blue dot representing where I am, uh, I'm going to drop down here, hit tools, hit add waypoint, go to the more symbol, and I'm going to slide down until I find trails. And there you see the trails. And then I'm gonna leave it red because for me, trails and leaving it red means that this is an area that's a logging road. 
that'll help me when I go back later and begin to plot things out on the map. So again, I'm going to go back and make sure that I drop this right on the dot. Then hit save. And this trail is marked. What I'm going to do is I'm going to follow this trail back for a little while. Maybe get two or three more plots to give me an indication uh, of the logging trail itself and which direction it's going. Some of these trees have been totally devastated by gypsy moss. It's amazing to me the stress that these trees go through when the gypsy moths eat all of the leaves. I mean, here's a tree right here that's still got great canopy. And there's a tree right next to it in which you can see no leaves on it or very few leaves because the gypsy moths have pretty much eaten the entire tree. Here's a no-no on state land. Take a look right here. You can see that there are some old steps that were screwed or nailed into a tree right here. Definitely on state land. That's not good for trees, not healthy. You should have lock-on stands, hang-on stands, things that are not going to cause any damage to the actual uh, cambium of the tree itself. Got some cherry trees in here. Got some sugar maples and red maples. Got some of these nice big red oaks though that you see, which great food source for the deer, depending upon the time of the year which they're dropping. I'm gonna keep an eye on this as I walk through this property and see if I can find some of these bedding areas that are also right near food sources. And guess what? There's a dog dropping a deuce. Good boy, Timber. As I'm following this trail, here's another tree that I find right here. It's got some boards nailed into it. And obviously they're quite old, they've been there a long time, but I'm wondering if this gives me an indication that this is an area that is highly pressured for deer hunting. I see this logging trail continues across the edge of this steep face and if you take a look down below me you can see how steep it gets down below me here there's another logging trail that goes down to a creek in the valley down there that i'm going to head down into the other thing that i wanted to show you right at the top of this ridge is there's a deer trail that's crossing over this logging rail and you can see it working right back across the top of this ridge right here so i know i'm going to mark this as a deer trail on my map and uh, as I work back up the other side from down below, maybe I'll see if it connects. I would imagine that this deer trail runs along the top of this steep face right here. So if you take a look at my map, I have dropped a deer trail symbol right at the top of this steep face at the top of this ridge. Uh, it's still a trail symbol, but for me, deer is purple, logging roads are red. That just helps me to separate some of these different trail symbols that I find on the map when I get back into the house. I just walked down over this logging trail and it's kind of cool because there's one bench right here that's coming across this steep face but it doesn't look like there's been a lot of deer movement on it i see some old tracks i know timber i see some old tracks in here and the ferns are kind of separated a little bit but not what i expect with a lot of heavy deer traffic there's another little bench right down here that i'm going to hop down on and see if i see any more sign as i'm going down into this creek Amazing what this emerald ash borer does. This is all at the base of an ash tree that I'm walking past. Pretty mature one. They get up underneath there and totally and completely destroy the xylem and the phloem of the tree, all those living tissues underneath the bark. And once they do that, there's no more transport of water and minerals and nutrients back and forth in the tree. And the tree simply just dies and the bark just peels off as we see here. Invasive species. So this winter I had marked this as a possible area that I thought there might be some buck bedding. It's an east facing slope so you get some of those days in a west wind where the buck are protected over the leeward side of this ridge. And I came in here after setting this plot maybe two months ago and I take a look at this environment and I think it's definitely a good spot that you could see some buck bedding areas. You've got some evergreen trees that have some open areas underneath them. 
so the buck's going to be able to smell anything coming from up above them and they can sit in these areas right here look downhill and see if there's anything in front of them predator wise okay. so this winter when I was doing my work inside I dropped uh, a water crossing symbol just easier sometimes to have that on symbol on there uh, before you get out in the field and uh, as I come in here and I take a look I see this uh, real beat up bank with all sorts of deer tracks going down through right in through the ferns right across that creek and then uh, up the other side there so I'm going to take this water crossing symbol that I set up in the winter time I'm going to click on it and then go down here and hit edit and then I'm just going to slide up enlarge the screen a little bit and I'm going to drop that water crossing symbol right in the location where I'm at right here and you can see it's right behind my plot of where I'm standing right there hit save and now that's marked pretty little creek down at the bottom of this valley Here's some more evidence that this trail seems to be used quite a bit by deer. You can see that as they're jumping up over top of this log right here, uh, their hooves click the edge of this log. And you'll notice that there's not much moss left on there anymore. So. Been following this trail up this creek that's going diagonally up this steep slope pretty torn up with deer tracks coming up through. There's a whole bunch of deer poop right here. Gives me another indication that definitely some deer using this area recently. Some old acorns here. Looking to see if I can find an area where I find either some bedding or from some scrapes and rubs. Near the back of this property here as you see my red dot. Uh, I was hoping to kind of get back in here and find that there's not a ton of pressure, but I came back in here and here's camo chair. It looks like someone uses during the year to hunt. There's a bush light can that's laying there. Old remnants down there of some type of blind. And uh, like I said, we're right here on the edge of public and private. So I have a feeling this area that I'm in right here probably hunted a bit too much and I'm going to get out of here and hop to the other side of the creek. Crossed over the creek and there's some uh, pretty dense hemlocks on the far side just above maybe about a 20 foot cliff from the creek up and uh, there's this rub that I found right here that's fresh. It's still pretty splintered. There's still some shavings on the ground and uh, like I said it's just up on the opposite side of that creek where we just came from. So I'm going to move along this little trail right here and see if I can find anything else similar to this rub here. And I'm going to put this rub on my map right now. So I've been following this trail on that one rub. Quite a bit of deer poop on this trail pretty heavily used as I'm moving along and this trail is moving right along the edge of this creek right here and it's pretty steep down over the edge so definite funnel it's causing the deer to walk up along this edge that might be worth looking at putting a tree stand along this sometime during season. So this is definitely what I've been looking for. 
definitely have a rub line along the edge of this creek right here. What's nice is it's a lot of hemlocks, but it's intermixed with all these nice big red oaks that you see right here. So this is a spot that I'm going to move around a little bit. I'm going to take a look at and uh, see if I can find some way to set up either on one end or the other so I can catch deer coming in here to bed or leaving their beds. And I'm going to follow along out of here and see if I can find a distinct trail that's leaving this bedding area and see if I can find a place that I think would be a good option uh, to go ahead and put a tree stand. So I found a possible tree stand that's about 100 yards away from those rubs I found in that bedding area. But there's a four-wheeler track here. Definitely been people in here in the past, but the more I look at this four-wheeler track, it has not been used in a long time. There's no disturbed moss you see on these roots in the old four-wheeler path. So I think I'm all right. And uh, I found a tree up here in this open area where there's some wild blueberry, some other browse. My hope with this tree stand is I'm gonna catch some deer transitioning into this little open area of browse past this tree that I have right here that's got multiple trunks to try to hide me a little bit. And also coming up along the edge of this trail that's by this creek right down below me here. And if I look back behind me, about 100, 120 yards away, that's the area where those buck rubs were. When I started out the trip today, I forgot to hit the tracking function. So maybe my first two or 300 yards, I didn't have the tracking function on. But again, that was close to the road where I wasn't going to hunt anyways. But if you guys take a look, you can now see this tracking function shown in blue, giving you an indication of the exact area that you walked. That also helps when you get back in the house later to determine how to uh, make sense of these different waypoints that you plotted while you were in the field. I walked up out of that stream bottom, heading to the top of this ridge. and There's this Mount Laurel in here. There's scattered oaks present in here, red oaks, some evergreens, some older white pines, and some younger white pines. And then I've got this real dense thicket here in front of me. So I'm going to walk along the edge of this dense thicket and see if I can find any trails coming out of it. Well, that was good. I'm walking along the top of this laurel and I found this trail that intersects up and down. And small doe got up and jumped and ran away down here in this thick laurel stuff. I'm beginning to move now to the edge of a steep face in an east facing slope and I'm going to see if I can find a couple of trails that parallel that area. When I first came in and walked up to the top of that ridge. Uh, there was a ton of mature red oaks. And even down in that stream bottom, along the edge of the hemlocks, there was a ton of mature oaks. As I'm moving along this east edge, I'm finding that there is no mature oaks in here. Everything is sugar maple, and there's some white pines in here, a lot of ash that's dying off. Without having boots on the ground, I never would have known that. So I'm gonna go ahead and keep moving along the edge of this uh, East facing slope and uh, check out this next draw and work up that draw on the edge of the public and private land and see if I find uh, any distinct deer trails that may be moving up along the edge of that draw. As I'm moving up the edge of this draw, it's a pretty steep ravine uh, down into that creek. But up on the other side of that ravine, there's some private lands with some farms. So I'm walking along the edge of this ravine. I found some deer pellets. Definitely see deer tracks. Have not found any rubs or scrapes, but I'm gonna keep moving along and hopefully I'm gonna find a trail that comes diagonally up out of this creek uh, where I catch some deer that are either going to those farmer's fields in the evening or coming back from those farmer's fields in the morning and see if I can find a place to set up there. Like I said, it's pretty steep down in there and then I found this trail that goes diagonally down to the water crosses and goes up the other side to some farmers fields so I think this is a definite travel corridor I think it's definitely worth investigating uh, I found a beach here about six yards off the trail that I can probably get three sticks up and uh, get a shot on either side of this hemlock right here so I'm going to go ahead and plot this as a possible stand location on Onyx. So I've went ahead and plotted this 
yellow tree stand is a possible tree stand right here. I'm going to blow it up just a little bit so I can drop it right on that area right there. Uh, and I can hit save. And I can go back and take a picture of it and write some notes. So I think that stand location that I just put like 150 yards down this draw could be really effective with deer coming from the woods where they're going to bed on that leeward slope facing east and move along this draw and up to the fields to feed and back. As I'm walking along the edge of this draw, I'm getting back up to this ridge again. And as I get up on this ridge here, I'm beginning to see that there's more oaks here. So I went ahead and dropped a symbol I use for oaks. And it is a plant symbol, and I make it brown to represent oaks. So I drop that in that area, and then I'm gonna hit save. Just off public, there's private land, and there's a couple of fields over here, but I just walked up to them, and. There's nothing planted in them right now, it's just goldenrod. Back in here is an area that's mostly pines, but there's a lot of mature oak scattered through here. And coming down a trail right along the edge of these woods and the fields, uh, I found a real nice rub on a tree. And then there's a ravine that moves its way down here. So I'm gonna go ahead and drop down into this ravine and see if I can find some trails that are coming up out of that ravine uh, up to this wooded area and maybe out to the field. As I'm walking down out of these pines and hemlocks looking for a rub, I find that someone's already got a tree sitting here. So on my map, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put a tree stand symbol and I'm gonna make it white and to me that represents somebody else's tree. I found an area here that's a great transition between really thick pines, a lot of bedding, there's a whole bunch of decent size rubs in here. I found at least five or six of them and then this hardwoods up here. I found a tree right here that can shoot right at the edge of this. There's a couple of deer trails that are crisscrossing in here. There's one there, there's another one coming out there. There's a four-wheeler trail that's really old that's on the edge of this. So I think this is a definite spot I'm going to come back and look at setting up a tree. So I went ahead and dropped it on the map, took a picture, hit save, and it's going to populate. And we'll see that it shows up right where my red dot is right there. This is the kind of stuff that bothers me on public land. If you're going to use the land we all own, clean up after yourself. So a little bit tired, didn't quite get all the way through the four miles. I got about three miles, maybe just under three miles done. And I decided that since I found a logging road here, I'm gonna follow this logging road out to my truck. And then at least I've got a way in and out and I've got three or four possible stands set up right now. When I get back to the house and I clean this stuff up, I can use this logging road to help me get into those stands and find out what the best entry points are so that not only am I coming in in the right wind direction, uh, but I'm not bumping deer in their beds. So here's this trail that's working up from the creek that I just came to. You can see it's washed out from all this damn rain we've been having lately. And I believe we're heading back out towards the truck right there so we can find an easy entry point. Uh, possibly even bike in, depending upon the steepness of the slope. I wanted to summarize for you guys by showing a comparison side-by-side -side of the beginning map to the end map. And you can see that there's quite a few waypoints that I've plotted as uh, I did the hike today. A couple of things I wanna go through for you guys. Uh, first of all, this is in the satellite mode, so you're not seeing the contour lines. Uh, you'll see the yellow dotted line, and that was the proposed hike, and you can see the blue track. And you can see that it's never perfect. At least those yellow dotted lines give you an idea of the path you wanna try and follow, and then when you're out there in the woods, uh, you're gonna veer off to directions that you think you're finding sign or you may find sign. If you take a look, uh, the plots that are red trail marks there are my logging roads. The purple trail symbols are my deer trails. I've got some buck bedding in brown there. I have some possible tree stands in yellow and probable tree stands in black. Uh, there's some rub symbols on there, uh, even a water crossing for a creek. 
So again, what I will do in the next video is we'll come back and the third series will clean this map up to make it very easy to see and understand so it's much more useful when you actually go out in the field to hunt in the fall. So it was a good morning. I uh, spent a bit more time out here than I expected, but again, trying to put stuff together for this video to give you guys an idea of what I do when I'm out in the field uh, using Onyx to scout with boots on the ground. Uh, I'll go back and I'll put this all together into a, a package that's easy for you guys to understand and hopefully give you guys a real good idea uh, what I do with waypoints when I'm out here in public land, relaxing, away from work, with the dog. Okay guys, we'll talk to you next time. Have a great day from Whitetails Deer Hunting. Hope you liked it. Please subscribe. See ya.